And you've been listening to the results of that uh, defamation lawsuit. And joining us now is Jeff Lewis, a, a defamation attorney. And thanks so much for joining us, uh, Jeff. From what I gathered, and I must admit, I have not been to law school, but it sounded as though uh, now Amber Heard will have to pay $15 million to Johnny Depp, and Johnny Depp will have to pay Amber Heard $2 million. Is that correct? Let me, uh, and thanks for having me, let me say in Virginia, unlike California, there's a cap on punitive damages at $350,000. So uh, the $5 million punitive damages award will likely be reduced to $350,000. But in all other respects, you're absolutely right. And so, I mean, this is, you can't call it a complete victory for Johnny Depp because he also has to pay Amber Heard $2 million. Is that true? Correct. He can't call it a, a complete victory because he's got to pay her that. And also, I'll say um, there's an argument that perhaps there's an inconsistent verdict here in finding that uh, Amber lied about Johnny and Johnny lied about Amber. Uh, uh, the lawyers are going to have to dig into this verdict and see what kind of appellate arguments could be made uh, as to whether or not the jury may have misunderstood the questions. Yeah, and you know, I want to bring up also, Jeff, that uh, the op-ed was actually, I guess, co-written by the ACLU. So, so how does that play into all of this now? Well, Johnny Depp's team made the uh, uh, decision early on not to sue the Washington Post or the ACLU. So uh, they're not going to face liability, either the Washington Post or the ACLU, although the ACLU has filed a tangential motion to recover some uh, costs associated with complying with the subpoena. Let's talk a little bit about uh, you You have to show malice in a defamation case. And uh, the jury apparently felt that was the case when it came to Amber Heard, but also, again, partly on Johnny Depp, which seems a little, as you were talking about before, a little confusing there. Can you kind yeah, of- Yeah, we're inconsistent. Um, and yeah. let, let me say this. They held Johnny Depp liable, not for words he said, but for words that his lawyer said. And they also found that somebody, it wasn't clear according to the verdict, had malice towards Amber Heard when those statements were made. Did Johnny Depp bear malice or did Johnny Depp's lawyer bear malice? The, the verdict is puzzling. Well, the jury only deliberated for 12 hours and 45 minutes, so it was pretty quick. Do you, do you think that that may have played a role in kind of the inconsistencies? Yeah, it could be, you know, and trial lawyers often think that a fast verdict, a quick verdict like this means uh, the jury didn't spend a lot of time talking about damages. Uh, the fact that there's inconsistencies and that interesting uh, issue involving the lawyer uh, and whether or not the lawyer had malice or Johnny Depp had malice is, uh, are going to be questions that legal pundits like me will be talking about for a long time. Uh, we know so often in other cases uh, they could appeal. Is that the same in this case? Can they appeal and say, we're not going to pay this. We need to have another jury look at it or a judge look at it. Either side can appeal, unlike uh, the situation in England where it was discretionary and the appeal was rejected. Either side has the right to appeal and have a, another judge or judges look at the case to see if there was legal errors made. But keep in mind, it's not a retrial. There's not going to be witnesses testifying. The questions on appeal will be, did the trial judge make a mistake in how this jury trial was handled? What do you make of the fact that, uh, you know, Johnny Depp's name was never mentioned in that op-ed, but people are just assuming that she was talking about him? Yeah, it's an interesting issue. One of the elements of defamation is you've got to prove that a false statement was made and it concerned you. It was about you. And his name wasn't mentioned, but I didn't hear much from Amber Heard on the stand denying that it was referring to Johnny Depp as opposed to somebody else. Do you think that this uh, trial is going to impact future op-eds and, uh, you know, fighting in the media among couples? There's absolutely going to be a chilling effect as to both op-eds and what newspaper boards are willing to have printed on their pages. And uh, in terms of uh, domestic violence reporting, I'm sure there's going to be a chilling effect, uh, especially when a high-profile figure is involved. Nobody's going to want to go through what Amber Heard just, just survived. It, in, in many ways, it almost seems like there is no winner in this because uh, people heard a lot of the dirty laundry, as you would call it. Well, let me say, let me say this. Uh, the, 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 the jury clearly said 
that the sexual violence did not occur. And I think Johnny Depp can walk away from this with the do higher dollar amount saying that he got a, a victory uh, because the only thing he lost was statements made by a former lawyer. And I think there's an appealable issue there. So I think Johnny Depp will find that his name has been restored, assuming he survives the appeals, and he'll walk away from this as a win. All right. Well, Jeff Lewis, we certainly appreciate your time and discussing this uh, verdict uh, this afternoon. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. Thank All you. Right.